this project in particular is about giving back because Australia is quite a wealthy country and these students sometimes can be quite well off. Some aren't, but they, in a way they all want to give back to a community in need. And as we see here, this community is in dire need for kindergarten. Their building's falling apart. It's way too small. So we get involved with Rotary and uh, ABCD charity. And we come to this school and we uh, help fund it and we help uh, the final process of painting it and fitting it out and getting ready for everything. Kindy, kindy children really need space for their art and craft, for their like a free play. And we need corners in our rooms. For them, for example, shop corner, library corner and all those. It will be easy to them to understand. We can see the difference. The, having, having the advantage of having a kindergarten in this school, uh, the primary school, children when they go after kindergarten, when they go to class one, there's no more crying in school. Parents don't have to come and sit for a whole day long for the, to, to be with their children. They just yes. come freely. They, they are uh, uh, ready to go into the education system. Uh, whereas before kindergarten, it was very, very hard. I think it's certainly better if you can get local involvement within mm. your project. I mean, it's okay we can put funds in um, to help buy materials, but I think, you know, if you can get the local people to actually help hands-on in building that, they get more of a sense of pride in what's, what's happening in their mm. village or in their town. So this yeah. is just, I think, our way, instead of just giving the money to actually come and show we do care, it's not just easy to put your mm. hand in your pocket, you've actually kind of come out here and mm. do a bit of work. So it's a bit of a bonding exercise, I guess. Now the people have actually seen that uh, Rotary uh, from uh, Geelong has come down and Deacon, some students have come down, State University. So it, it's an awareness program also for the people that, uh, uh, it's not only charity work, it's also bonding and interacting of the cultures too. It's a bit of a crowd, isn't it? <laughs> Hi. I'll go with the sun and ocean and islands, maybe some palm trees, maybe a kangaroo, you can get like a brownie colour. I really enjoyed the process of building the school. Um, there was a lot of painting though. <laughs> After a while I did get over painting, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, but it looks incredible. For, I was actually a bit worried. I was like, oh, none of us really know how to paint and we don't have that much colours, but I'm so happy with how it looks. So it looks amazing. I think everyone really pulled together. It looks so, so good. <laughs> I don't think they've had face paint before. So we thought we'd try something. We were doing it for the volleyball and everyone wanted more. None of us really knew each other, so I guess we've kind of bonded at the same time as working on this project. And it's been good to get to meet some new people from Deakin instead of just having your little group that you have all the time. Because when I started at Deakin, I already knew two people that were doing the exact same double degree, so we kind of just stuck together the whole time. So it's been good to branch out, meet new people while working on something like this. Having such a great group around me, it's really opened me up. Like, I got here and I was covered in mozzie bites and your typical city chick from Melbourne and, you know, everyone was kind of laughing at me going, you're such a baby, you know, come on, grow up. And that's when I kind of looked in myself and went, I have to toughen up. Like, it's time to do things that I wouldn't normally do. 
So I felt like I've grown so much as a person. I think the most thing, like the most important thing about this trip has been the people. Definitely, I think I've learned a lot from them. Just seeing life in a different way, having a different perspective on what's important, I guess. It's not so much about what you have in life, it's about how you accept it. I was surprised by one and her family just because I've never ever met people as inspirational as they are in my entire life. I'd be surprised if I ever meet anybody again that's just as wonderful as they are. Like they're so giving and their values that they have and you can see it in their kids as well. It's really incredible. I think that's what touched me most is their family and I really hope to take what I've learnt from them back with me because they are the most amazing people I think I've ever met in my life. <laughs> really love her, the way she socialized with my children and she brought the storybooks for my children. It really gave us uh, new things for us in my family to learn again, having people coming, like coming from overseas to have her here. But we really like to stay with her. We don't want her to go back to Australia. <laughs> well, I think Homestay um, made the experience. Um, <clears throat> I think if it was just staying at a lodge or alternative accommodation, you wouldn't. It wouldn't be the true Fijian experience. It would be like just going to a holiday, like on a holiday somewhere, and sort of just doing like a spot of volunteering. But I think in terms of this, it's been really cool because we get to eat, you know, the foods they eat and meet their friends and go to church with them and all the sort of day-to-day -day experiences that they they have they shared with us, and that's really important. Very warm and welcoming and inclusive community. Everyone seems to know everyone and everyone's related to everyone. And they're also pleased to see each other. And they laugh a lot. I was just saying to Linda, they laugh more than our kids laugh. They giggle constantly. I must say the general level of uh, well-being of the people here is probably the highest I've seen almost anywhere in the Pacific because, and ironically, um, the, probably the average income is amongst the lowest I've seen here. I think it's a combination of uh, these people are still very well connected to their land. There hasn't been a dislocation and there hasn't been too much of a pursuit of money. Sim not because they didn't want to, the opportunity is just not there. So for whatever reason, the people are amongst the happiest I've ever seen. It's so different, like I think I'll go home and wave at everyone and everyone will look at me like I'm a lunatic. It just amazes me at how happy they are considering how little that they have and you know sometimes like I get upset if like I don't have something or you know when I was a kid I was like oh well my friend has that like why can't I have that whether well, these kids sort of just take it in their stride and it doesn't really affect them and they're not materialistic at all and they can find if they don't have something they find a way to sort of compensate like for that even like they don't have a lot of toys so they have the stone game where they do like the hand. They use this for when they got no sex so they use this for getting foods in olden days and this is the basket from Dalo or Tivoli. This is the wing -tang. A big difference I noticed between Australian kids and Fijian kids is um, they're actually happy to go to school. They look forward to going to school and playing with their friends and learning and it's just a much more relaxed environment for them, I guess. So they actually, you know, look forward to it. Whereas, as, as you know, Australian kids sort of, uh, I don't think I've ever met an Australian kid who goes, yeah, you can't wait to go to school and, and learn how to do maths, you know. I mean, I don't know many kids in Australia that would know how to speak two or three languages, sometimes four. Um, so they're, they're really smart kids. They're just, uh, yeah, just brought up in a different way, I guess. Uh, there are a lot of good players here, but I have seen with the good players, they don't have money to buy boot, uh, rugby boot, soccer boot. 
So there is one of my players who is playing for under 13 rugby team. He is a very good player and I believe he will be chosen to represent Avuni. So I have told him that I will sponsor him with the boot because as a sports teacher I want their talents to be developed. I am very much uh, you know, interested in sports. For my school time I still remember myself I coming from a very poor background. Myself too I still remember when I was chosen to play under 17 when my parents could not afford the boot and I was dropped from the squad. So I have that same feeling for these children. So I knew what was going over me, so I just don't want the students to go over that again. Sambala bombe kali nangauna, kongkara pula poli tu mai kina, mevaka nama rama tu nindrambla abu, lala viras tava nonambula, tini sarame lakin rabun rabua, stavi chisu navu nimbula. This is a hurricane prone areas where every year we have hurricanes and even droughts and things like that. And the only income around here is copra, kava and uh, dalo, which are seasonal crops. crops. Usually kava takes about three years. And if you are employed, you just earn about two dollars an hour or two fifteen hour around here as temporary workers. Now the children are doing maths. About four or five of them, they don't have boots. So they, they are not doing anything, they are just sitting. And the only time they learn is through the discussion done by the teacher. The writing part is not... Children and parents don't have a proper light at home. The children don't have proper light. Stationery, like books and pens, the parents can't afford the uniform. That really affects, because if a child's uniform is not that good and he's torn, he comes and sits in the classroom, he isolates himself from others. So maybe they'll not turn up the other day. Or secondly, when they turn up, they would pretend that they have forgotten the book at home. And they'll lie eh, that they have forgotten the book. So in the end, what happens? They'll lose interest in my education. So, uh, most of them have, don't have the books to write on because of uh, their family background. Most of them are coming from very poor family. And Maybe around the, in this school, maybe around 30% are coming from single parents. That's another cause of children coming to school without books. And when they don't have books, it's really hard for us to teach. If there's a child who is who have got a caliber, in future he, he or she can be a, get a professional job. Eh? And then if there's uh, no funds for them to get educated from a lower level, like primary and secondary, then they would never make it. So sponsoring a child helps a lot. Like in this school, we have got 60 dollars fees. So if somebody sponsors a child, it means they are giving the uniform, they are giving the size books, and they are giving paying the fees. So that child gets the opportunity to get the school education. The kids here, they have a different, like, different attitude to school. Like they're so for their school work. It's, it's amazing. Oh, well, we first dropped Kalinda off only for the outside, and to go in, and it's just really humbling because we're all staying with um, more wealthy families who have a proper house and power and TV. To actually go in and see how they're living and that they've given up their room for Kalinda, it's just amazing. It's really humbling. It honestly is, and makes you want to work harder at the school. And um, because her daughter's going to kinder next year, so she gets to experience the new kinder, which is going to be amazing. Once you to sponsor all their family. <laughs> I think really it's not about so much what those students will bring to Fiji. It's probably about what they can pick up. And, and the old adage about travel knocks out ignorance. And if we can take a half dozen uni students who are going to go on to be teachers and mentors and introduce them to this neck of the woods young, show them some of the issues and problems, but give them an appreciation of the culture and the values, then that's going to be a good thing. The angels back up me from heaven's open door And I can't feel at home in this world anymore <laughs> Oh Lord, you know I have no friends like you If heaven is not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels at my place we had a bucket shower and it's like an outside toilet we had to pour water in to flush it. But it really, it didn't take me long to get used to it at all. Like, 
everyone's like, oh, I can't wait to have a hot shower when I get home. But I don't, hasn't worried me so much. I mean, we're always swimming in the ocean or, so you kind of get clean anyway. You learn so much from coming to Taviuni. Not having internet for two weeks. I survived without internet for two weeks. And like, coming to a random family and learning their culture is just amazing. Seeing how they go about things and you really will come back a different person. Taking what you learned from your family into your own family. See my pot from living <laughs> Oh, they are very nice and I think this is the first time we've experienced uh, students staying in uh, and helping in the school. I think it's something new in the school and they're also helping in the school, building the kindergarten. And um, they've come in with new ideas and they've uh, come in with the... Uh, we've been able to bond and uh, share each other's cultures. And uh, day by day, I think uh, they're able to learn a lo lot of things and exchange that uh, with our students. At the end of the day, what happens to what you've done, yeah. you know, really you need that Rotary Club to be able to continue in that area to mm. to, to look after the works you've done and, and monitor it really. Yeah. yeah, so it's not fly in, do something to the guys and yeah. fly out again. Yeah. It's just not what it's about. Yeah. You know, teach a man to fish instead of giving him a fish, you know, that old thing. I think that's mm. our philosophy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's going to be really hard leaving tomorrow. Everyone's just so happy and cheerful and you know, welcoming and loving and we won't get that in Australia. It just, it's not the same. It doesn't feel as genuine as much from the heart as it is here. Uh, you know, it's pretty cliche to say that when it's only been two weeks, but yeah, uh, words can't describe how amazing the experience was and how much it's impacted all of us. So yeah, I don't think it'll fade very quickly. <laughs> it feels like it feels like it's gone really fast being here, but at the same time, thinking of when we were back at home last, it seems like forever ago. <laughs> Don't let me go.